You are listening to the 13 Club Podcast. My name is Mira May. And I'm Spectre. And we are here to bring you a post-mortem episode. Um, I think last episode you guys heard an older one. Mm -hmm. Um, So this is not probably going to be super related to that. Yeah. Uh, Hope you guys don't mind. (laughs) You know, I didn't even think about that because I was still thinking about the fact that we had last recorded about Ireland. Like, I last recorded Mm -hmm. about Ireland. So all my post-mortem stuff is about Ireland. But I was like, now that I'm thinking back on it, I could have done, like, a bunch of cursed objects. But I still could later. Yeah, maybe you will. Mm -hmm. That's okay, because I I was kind of the same way. I actually, when we recorded that last episode, I had, like, posited, maybe I'll look up for the postmortem. And I think it was um, whether that guy's books, um, Bruno Borgia, Mm -hmm. I think, whether they were still, like, selling well or what the reception was now that some time has passed. And, you know, it seems possibly exposed that his whole deal was a hoax. Mm -hmm. Um, And all I learned is that in the time that we made that episode till now, um, a bunch of the like English speaking websites have caught on to the fact that it was a hoax. So like at the time I was like translating all these web articles from Spanish and Mm -hmm. now they're like just everywhere. And I was like, well, okay, I guess. Yeah. So that's really the only thing I learned and that's not a very satisfying postmortem. So I picked something else. I still think that's interesting and good to know. Um, mm-hmm. I think that, yeah, I like re-listening to that episode and editing it. Um, I still think, although it wasn't, because I remember like you were saying at the end that you were like, it wasn't that satisfying, but I still think it's a cool mysterious thing. Even if it's, even if there is a conclusion, that's not the best. He still, my, yeah. he still did that. <laughs> exactly. He went there. Yeah, he did. <laughs> So, no, you're totally right. I, I think I was, at the time, I was a little disappointed, but, it, you you know, it was still interesting. Yeah, it was. Do you want me to go first? Sure. Or would you like to go first? Yeah, you go first. So, like I said, my postmortem was not valuable or interesting. So, um, I actually was thinking of you, and um, I was inspired by, I've recently started listening to the Myths and Legends podcast. I've seen that recommended to me, but I've never listened to it. I, I, it was recommended to me by uh, someone I know. And so I've been like kind of going through it. It's like, I don't dislike it. Um, I think he does a good job at retelling things. Um, like he does, I think, but I think like I didn't really get into it until he did a two-parter on, um, Kashi, which is like a, um, Russian, like, sorcerer of legend. At whatever. first I was like, a serial brand? <laughs> the, oh, yeah, Kashi? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my fucking God. You get out of my house. Um, I know because uh, my my boss, Stella, she is like, she lives off of it. Oh, my fucking God. I'm so angry right now. I didn't even think about that. Uh, well, he, anyway, he does, like, a... A myth or a legend or a story, and he usually breaks it up into, like, two or three episodes, like, so he'll be, like, episode, or, like, this legend, part A, part B, part C, or whatever. Okay. But the last few minutes of every episode, he does a, like, creature of the week. Oh. And one week he did, and I'm sure I'm going to say this absolutely incorrectly, but maybe you can correct me, because this is the Irish creature, the Dullahan. That's, that's right. Oh, so you would know what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, I don't. Well, I don't know that much detail about it, but go ahead. It's. I mean, I didn't like do a deep dive on it because mm-hmm. I didn't feel like there was probably enough to do an entire episode's worth. But I just wanted to share it. Um, it reminded me of you, obviously, because because Ireland talked about <laughs> Ireland. Um, but in case any of you guys weren't familiar with it, as I was not, um, the Dullahan is kind of the like headless horseman. <laughs> of Irish legend, I guess, Mm -hmm. Um, depicted as a headless rider, usually on a black horse, who carries their own head under one arm. Usually the Dullahan is male, but there are some female versions. Yeah. Holla. Um, The mouth is usually in... (laughs) Is is it you? Uh, Yeah. (laughs) I think think it was. Um, The mouth is usually in a hideous grin that touches both sides of the head. Which I guess means it's just a big smile. Mm-hmm. Um, its eyes are constantly moving about and can see across the countryside even during the darkest nights. The flesh of the head is said to have the color and consistency of moldy cheese. Mm. 
so attractive. I, I don't like to think about the consistency of flesh at that level. Yeah, no. Um, but what is extremely metal is that the Dullahan is believed to use the spine of a human corpse for a whip, and its wagon is adorned with funeral objects. That reminds and me of that, that post. But uh, that's der- derailing. But somebody recently, uh, like, on social media, had posted, like, what looked like a spine whip. Oh. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Um, but uh, also on the wagon, it says candles are placed in skulls to light the way. The spokes of the wheels are made from thigh bones, and the wagon's covering is made from a worm-chewed pall or dried human skin. Mm. Um, the ancient Irish believed that where the Dullahan stops riding, a person is due to die. Uh, and the Dullahan calls out the person's name, at which point the person immediately drops dead. Um, and also that it's probably, like, the only creature or whatever of legend, uh, myth or whatever, that seems averse to gold. So I guess having, like, wearing gold or having gold is, like, one way to repel it. I, I'm so. looking at photos, like, while you're telling me this, and there is this one that's a female Dullahan, and um, ah. it looks so awesome. I'm going to put a sale on our social media. Please do. Yeah. I feel like if I try to, like, show you on camera, it's not going to look good, but I will post it on social media because that is so cool. I just, like, I, I am fond of, like, the Headless Horseman legend in general. Same. Uh, I always have since I was a kid. Um, and... Uh, so I was, like, really excited about, like, a different, like, cultural version of one. Mm-hmm. And then it's just also, like, extremely fucking nuts. Yeah. So I was all about it. Um, uh. yeah, we have some good ones. Um, I've been really... It's... I don't feel like it's as cool, but um, in Irish tradition or legend, they they have the Kelpie. Do you know the Kelpie? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been Yeah. I've been considering getting a Kelpie tattoo because... When I was in Ireland, um, in Dublin, all of, like, not all of them, but especially on some of the bridges, there are, like, light posts, and the light posts are, like, um, they come down, and then there's a Kelpie on either side, and they look oh, so cool, and it's just, so just, like, a cool piece of mythology just built into architecture, and I like that, so I've been thinking about getting a Kelpie tattoo, and then also the Headless Horseman thing, I don't know, this is, like, not that important, but... Um, for some reason now, like I used to, when I think thought of the headless horseman, I would always think of, um, you know, like Tim Burton's Johnny Depp mm-hmm. one. Um, but Which I do, I like that movie. I I like it too. Um, I think it's still fine to like it. And um, but now I always think of Skyrim because there Ugh. there's this like, ghost headless horseman that you follow, and he takes you to, like, a cool, like, area where you can get good shit. But I, oh, I remember... The good kush. Yeah. Well, I remember when uh, I first, like, the first time I ever played Skyrim, I discovered it, and I was, like... <laughs> there was a period of time where I was working at GameStop, and then me and other customers and stuff would just, like, come in and tell each other, like, what crazy shit happened in Skyrim, and uh-huh. I was like, oh, I saw the Headless Horseman. It was so cool. It's not that cool, but I loved it. <laughs> it is cool. <laughs> I always think of um, Wishbone. Oh, fucking Wishbone. I love Wishbone. <laughs> I was, like, fucking obsessed with Wishbone I when had I was all a kid. the books. I, me too! Mm-hmm. I had all the Wishbone mysteries. And then the double size mysteries. And one of them was, I think, Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Oh, okay. I don't think I ever had that one. But I had a bunch of, like, the Sherlock Holmes ones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Shout out so, to Wishbone. What's the story, Wishbone? <laughs> Get at me. Um, yeah, so that's that's my... It's not anything super detailed. I just learned about a new creature or legend and wanted to share it. That's awesome, and I appreciate it. And now I feel like we have a theme to postmortem, which is accidental, but still cool. <laughs> it worked out. Um, For mine... I just wanted to talk about a couple places that I, um, maybe I'll just talk about one because this is pretty, like, meaty. Um, but there are three places that I would like to go in Ireland and maybe I will just talk about one this time and then I'll talk about the other ones later. (coughs) Um, so the, the one I really wanted to go to, um, is the Hellfire Club 
And Ooh. I know, like, I talk about him way too much, but if anybody ever <laughs> watches Ghost Adventures, uh, Zach Bagans has said that the Hellfire Club was one of the most haunted places he's ever been. It's a pretty mm-hmm. good episode. Um, but I couldn't go because, as uh, my husband mentioned in our postmortem, um, we had decided to... Sorry, my dog really wants to come in. Um <laughs> We had decided to go to Ireland during Christmas, which was cool because we knew we would get the castle to ourselves, but it was not cool because we decided to, like, leave the castle and try to tour around, and almost everything was closed. So I couldn't go to the Hellfire Club, but I wanted to, and so I'll just talk about, like, what it is. Um, so this is an article that is from Authentic Vacations. And it says, for centuries, the hilltop Montpellier Hill, south southwest of Dublin and overlooking the city, was occupied by a Neolithic passage grave, burial chambers covered in earth or stone, usually with a single narrow entrance, whose entrance was marked by a large cairn, which is a pile or stack of stones. Uh, But the vantage point and the view were too powerful for one 18th century man to resist, so he built his home there. Using stones from the cairn, he destroyed. Um, many of the locals were terrified that the man had offended the old pagan gods, especially after a powerful storm blew his roof off uh, shortly after construction. And some say he offended the devil himself. In the early 18th century, William Connolly, when the Speaker of the Irish House of Commons and one of the richest men in Ireland was, um, then, not when, uh, was casting about for a suitable, suitably impressive location for an expansive hunting lodge he wanted to build. South of the city, he found the northernmost mountain that forms the ridge of the Glensomal Valley. No one remembers the original Irish name for the mountain, though using the Suid u Kileg or Suid u um, that's probably not correct because Irish alphabet versus English alphabet makes <laughs> no sense. I'm working on it, but I'm not there. Um, You'll get there. Have been suggested. The site and the views of Dublin convinced Connolly that this was where he wanted to build his hunting lodge, which he named Mount Pelaire. Um, during construction, workers found a large cairn and stones aplenty that later turned out to be part of a Neolithic passage grave and quickly recycled the stones, using them to build the hunting lodge. Reportedly, the magnificent lintel over the fireplace was a large standing stone of the type used to build henges like Stonehenge found on the site. Both standing stones and cairns were known as ancient grave markers, but Connolly forged ahead anyway. And shortly after construction was completed in 1725, a powerful storm blew the roof clean off of his new hunting lodge. I'm sensing a theme. Yeah. (laughs) The locals claimed it was retribution for desecrating the burial site. Some said by the pagan gods of old, some said by Satan himself. Neither possibly seemed to disturb Connolly in the slightest. He promptly built an arched stone roof for his lodge, again using stones from the cairn and around the site. That stone roof still exists today. Connolly died in 1729, and for several years, Montpelier was largely abandoned, which only added to the appeal for the Hellfire Club, who began renting the hunting lodge from the Connolly family in 1735. The Hellfire Club originated in London in 1719, through King George the F- though King George I quickly outlawed it. Royal Edict, however, was no impediment to the idol, titled Rich Congregating, and the idol titled Rich Congregating and uh, engaging in immoral acts. Dublin's Hellfire Club was a place for wealthy young gentlemen to drink, gamble, hire prostitutes, and even allegedly engage in more degenerate activities like animal torture and Satan worship. Their motto, their motto was, do what thou wilt. Um, one of the Dublin club founders was Richard Parsons, her first Earl of Ross and Grandmaster of the Freemasons of Dublin. Sheriff of Dublin Simon Luttrell was also a member. 
The combination of reputedly cursed location and allegedly depraving, depraved doings quickly led to an ever wilder story about the club's activities. The remoteness of the location meant that a few, it, that few, if any, of the activities could be witnessed or verified, which only added fuel to the fire. And a great many stories about the Hellfire Club involved fire. One story states that late one night, a priest called on the house to see what was really going on. In one version of the story, when he entered the house, the center of attention was a large black cat with ears so pointed that they resembled horns, sitting in a chair reserved for the devil himself. The priest immediately sensed evil when the cat started snarling at him and threw holy water on the cat, which turned into a devil-like figure and ran outside, burning down the roof as it left. In another version of the story, the priest finds a black cat that had been sacrificed and exorcised the cat's soul. In the third version of the story, the cat was doused in whiskey and set on fire. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> An oft-repeated story about the Hellfire Club is the story of the Burn Chapel Whaley. In 1740, one of the principal members of the club was Richard Chapel Whaley. He was at Montpelier enjoying one of the Hellfire Club's drunken parties. Some say a black mass was performed when a servant accidentally spilled a drink on him. In retaliation, Whaley doused the man in brandy and set him on fire. That's the servant. I'd rather you do that to. I'd rather you do that to some dude than a cat, to be honest. The same. Um, as the <laughs> servant ran through the house, he grabbed a tapestry to try to smother the flames, and eventually the blaze burned the entire lodge. There are tales of black masses and human sacrifices, one of which led to the lodge catching on fire and killing several members. There is even a story of the club members kidnapping, killing, and eating a farmer's daughter. But the most famous story involves a mysterious stranger who wandered in one night, and the stranger joined a card game that was already in progress. At one point, the player dropped his card and bent down to look under the table for it. As he looked, he glimpsed the stranger's legs and realized that the man had a cloven foot. When the stranger was confronted, he burst into flames and vanished. Eventually, the Hellfire Club was managed to burn Montpelier so badly that it was unusable. They stayed in the area, though, just moving down the road to the steward's house, known at, as Killikey House, and also owned by the Connolly family. Their level was of activity waxed and waned through the 18th century, when, and when Thomas Buck Whaley died in 1800, the Hellfire Club, then known as the Holy Fathers, died with him. Today, many visitors resort to stir, uh, report strange paranormal activities and a feeling of pure evil at Montpelier, which is now popularly known as the Hellfire Club. Visitors walking through the ruins have reported an entity pulling on necklaces and bracelets hard enough to snap them in some cases. People have reported seeing a ghostly black cat. And those brave enough to visit the site at night have heard the screams of a woman who apparently died when she was set on fire and rolled down a hill in the burning barrel in a burning burning barrel during a satanic ritual. Would you like to pay a visit to Ireland's notorious Hellfire Club? Um, this this website will like help you do that. That's authentic Ireland. You don't need to though. You can <laughs> literally take a bus there. Um, so yeah, uh, I really want to go to there. No, I think that sounds really rad and exciting. I really liked hearing all that backstory mm -hmm. because all my main knowledge of the Hellflyer Club is through s stuff that was only like really loosely inspired by it. Yeah, like the Hellfire Club is in the Marvel, both the Marvel and DC universes, mm -hmm. um, which you know drew very, 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 very loose inspiration from the actual historic place. Yeah, but, and also there was, like, a few places where they gathered, so this is just, mm -hmm. like, one particular one. But, yeah, this is, if you go and, <laughs> this is one of those things where I really like this this strange habit of finding haunted places and then looking at their TripAdvisor reviews. Uh -huh. Because people will tell their story about, like, what they experienced there. Yeah. And, um, that, like, a lot of people really say this is a fucked up place. And I, I can't be wait to, to go. go. <laughs> oh my god, you have to tell me everything. I will, I will. I still have to... Yeah, I still have some, like, Ireland videos that I haven't had a chance to edit, so I would probably do the same thing when I go. I'm excited. 2020. Cool. Well, 
2020. 2020. Um, is there anything else that we want to throw in there before we wrap up and move on to our main episode? No, I don't think so. Um, read anything good or watched anything new? or? Right now I'm doing reading for my pagan meetup book club, so it's not really related. That's fair. Yeah. Um, I think I started watching the, um... I guess uh, USA Channel is getting into the anthology true crime series. Mm-hmm. I saw you tweet about game. it. Yeah, and I, I would recommend that to anyone who's interested. Uh, it's the murder of uh, Biggie and Tupac. Oh, okay. Um, which is something that I'm pretty familiar with, and um, but was never like super, super interested in, but it's actually very like compellingly presented. It's like... Um, you know, the, the way that they did American Crime Story where it's, like, dramatized, I guess. But mm-hmm. they've done a good job with it. Awesome. And then it's also uh, one of the main actors is a Mick Poyle. Oh. And he's incredible. He's mm-hmm. so good. Um, and the actors that play Tupac and Biggie are also incredible, too. But if that's your jam, I would recommend it. Yeah, that sounds cool. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, I don't have... I'm still, like, making my way through Picnic at Hanging Rock, and I have one episode left. And I'm sad because it's just a mini series, and they're not going to make a season two because that would be silly. Yeah. Oh, well. All right. Well, I guess um, thank you guys for joining us for this little mini episode, and we will be back next week with another full episode. It will be our 13th episode. Oh, my God. So get hyped. Yep. All right. All right, guys. Bye. Bye.